This is Mokka Bezirgan with Rebel News, and my question is to Mr. O'Toole. Do you think that natural immunity from having COVID and recovering from it should be an exemption under vaccine rules? Are there any other exemptions would you support, like for religious reasons? I couldn't hear all of the question, but um, we've been very clear on our approach on vaccines. Vaccines are critically important. They're safe and effective for use. I encourage everyone to get vaccinated. I've been very public in that. We do respect people making their own decisions about their health care, and that's going to be our approach. We not, must inform and encourage and respect people as we use all tools to fight COVID-19, everything from masks to rapid testing, uh, in addition to getting vaccine levels up as high as possible. Bonjour, Monsieur Outour. Euh, je vous ai parlé à vous et à vos, euh, plusieurs de vos candidats cette élection. Je vous ai posé des questions et euh, vous m'avez répondu. Mais quand votre personnel a découvert que j'étais avec Rebel News, ils m'ont interdit l'entrée et également certains de vos candidats se sont enfuis de moi, dont Gérard Deltel. Ne pensez-vous pas que c'est votre travail de parler à tous les Canadiens et pas seulement à ceux qui sont en accord avec vous et que les personnes que vous aimez? We have a plan to have a positive campaign. I expect that approach across the country. And that's why every day that I have a press conference after my announcement, that's why at the beginning of the campaign, we launched our platform and we've just uh, received the report from the parliamentary budget officer. We have a transparent approach when it comes to our plan. And that's important for me as a leader. And it's important for me to answer questions like I'm doing tonight. I have a question from Tamara Ugolini from Rebel News. Thank you. Mr. Trudeau, the only reason that I'm allowed to ask you this question is because today the federal court ruled that the government doesn't have the right to determine who is or is not a journalist. This is the second election in a row that the court had to overturn your government. Do you still insist on being able to make that decision and why? First of all, questions around accreditation were handled by the press gallery and the consortium of uh, networks who have uh, strong perspectives on quality journalism and the important information that is shared with Canadians. Uh, the reality is organizations, organizations like yours uh, that continue to spread misinformation and disinformation on the science around vaccines, around how we're going to actually get through this pandemic and be there for each other and keep our kids safe is part of why we're seeing such um, unfortunate uh, anger and lack of understanding of basic science. And quite frankly, your I won't call it a media organization, your group of uh, individuals uh, need to take accountability for uh, some of the polarization that we're seeing in this country. And I think Canadians uh, are cluing into the fact that uh, there is a really important decision we take about the kind of country we want to see. And I salute all extraordinary hardworking journalists that put science and facts at the heart of what they do and ask me tough questions every day, uh, but make sure that they are educating and informing Canadians from a broad range of perspectives, which is the last thing that you guys do. The question is from Avin Seuss, Rebel News. Uh -oh. Hello, uh, this debate is an insider's club for the political establishment. It banned Maxime Bernier and the People's Party, even though he's ahead of you and the bloc combined in the polls. It also banned myself and Rebel News from even reporting until the federal court interjected and said that was illegal. You haven't spoke out against this exclusion. Do you think that all voices should be heard in Canada? I, I didn't fully hear the question. The sound isn't fantastic. Um, I believe you asked if voices should be heard. I certainly believe that uh, there is space and should be space for differences of opinion. I believe that uh, our democracy is healthier when we have a diversity of opinions. I think that actually what has gone on within my party has demonstrated that there are many healthy debates going on within politics, some of them difficult. Uh, so if that was your question, then certainly. Uh, I certainly 
certainly am not looking for people just to agree with everything that I have to say. Uh, I think that Parliament uh, is a place where we should be able to have robust exchanges, but still find the common ground. And there is a difference between having legitimate differences on policy and hyper-partisanship. Uh, we need to change the culture of politics. Alexandra pour Rebel News. Historiquement, le NPD s'est opposé aux grandes sociétés pharmaceutiques et aux sociétés milliardaires qui se sont enrichies grâce aux blocages comme Amazon et Walmart. Et le NPD était très attentif aux libertés civiles, y compris en étant pro-choix sous son propre corps. Pourquoi avez-vous embrassé les milliardaires de Big Pharma et abandonné votre philosophie de pro-choix? Euh, merci, mais je ne réponds pas aux questions de Rebel News. Est-ce que vous pensez que mm -hmm. euh, c'est une option de ne pas répondre à un média juste parce que le fait que vous nous aimez pas? Nous devons. Merci beaucoup. La prochaine question est de Rebel News. Good evening. Uh, before you tell me that you're not going to answer my question, I just want to say that I'm not here representing myself or my company. I'm here representing millions of Canadians who have real questions for you, like the one my colleague Alexa just asked. People who you would marginalize. Is your message to them that they are second-class citizens? Not at all. Sorry. If you can believe it, Justin Trudeau wouldn't let our reporters into the debate. We had to sue him in federal court, and we won. If you can help us crowdfund the cost of that lawsuit, please do. Go to letusreport.com. Thanks.